ChatGPT is in big trouble. Google's free competitor, Bard, just got a massive new update. Have you tried it yet? Let me know below. I just tried it this weekend and I spent my whole weekend talking to it, which is kind of sad. If you missed Google I.O. last week, this was the summary. This is AI to bring AI, 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 AI. But aside from creating great memes, Google did actually make some pretty grandiose announcements that left ChatGBT in the dust. So in this video, I'll give you an overview of the most important updates in Google's AI, and I'm going to show you 10 things that Bard can do that ChatGPT can't. Google rolled out massive new updates to all their AI, including Bard, Gmail, Google Maps, and Google Photos. These updates finally put Google into the AI race against ChatGPT and Bing, but before we talk about all of those, let's focus on Bard. I'm not going to lie. I switched to Bard now, and it's just way better than ChatGPT, in my humble opinion. The biggest change to Bard is that it's now trained on a massive data set and has internet access, which allows it to do things like generate text, translate languages, write different kinds of creative content, and answer your questions in a way more intuitive way with much better logic than it has before and than ChatGPT, in my opinion. This is all because Bard's now running on the most powerful new pontoon model and can access the internet. I'm personally most excited about the drafts feature because I know that many of you, when you use ChatGPT, you ask it to do the same thing again because it may not have a good response the first time or you want to rewrite it. Google's Bard gives you three answers for any prompt that you give it. It has three drafts. So if you don't like the first response, you can simply go to another draft. Unbelievably amazing. If you played around with the ChatGPT API, then you can actually select the number of different drafts you want through the ChatGPT API, but I'm not sure why they never implemented it in the UI because it's such a useful feature. I lied. I'm actually most excited about the export features. As someone who has been answering all their emails by copy pasting from ChatGPT since November, I'm in love with this. Bard can now export its responses directly to Gmail or Google Docs, which makes it way easier to use Bard for work in school without all the control C, control V. Not only this, but it also has multimodal capabilities, which means it now understands and can respond to input from multiple modalities like text, speech, and images. So you can now give Bard images or speak directly to it, which is way more intuitive and easy to use. It's actually a little bit scary how natural it feels to use Bard by speaking to it. I mean, Siri is horrible. Sorry, Siri. So I'm really excited to be able to talk to Bard instead of talking to myself. Next reader update is a huge win for you coders and developers out there, code generation. You can now use more than 20 programming languages like C++, Go, Java, JavaScript, obviously Python and TypeScript, all the major ones. And can even write functions for Google Sheet. As someone who did this in one of my first jobs, this is so valuable. And this means you can use Bard not only with your coding projects, but it can help you learn new programming languages. And we're gonna make a bunch of videos on how to use Bard for all these things. So stay tuned and make sure you're subscribed. So now Bard can generate code in all of these languages, which makes it such a valuable tool. You can get assistance in writing functions and reviewing your code. And yes, ChatGPT could do this, but now Bard can kind of do it better. We're gonna do a direct comparison between giving Bard code and giving ChatGPT code, and let's see who comes out on top. Next is visualization. So Bard can now generate visualizations of data like your own person personal data analyst. This is very similar to ChatGPT's code interpreter, but knowing Google, they're probably gonna make it even better. So this means you can use Bard to help you understand and communicate data in a way more effective way and have graphs and visualizations and all of that. You can now even generate images directly in Bard using Adobe Firefly. So this is a powerful tool for creating visual content. ChatGPT can't generate images yet. So Bard's gonna get all of the content creators on its side. Next is translation. So Bard can translate languages more accurately than ChatGPT can at this point. It can translate over a hundred languages and it's constantly being updated with new languages. Whereas, you know, ChatGPT's translations are often inaccurate and it can only handle a few languages. So you can now use Bard with all of your translation projects and it can help you learn new languages. So sorry, Duolingo, move over. Next big thing, you can now use Bard to create chatbots. So you can create virtual assistants that can help you with a variety of tasks like customer service, scheduling appointments. It can answer all of your questions in a more logical and intuitive way than ChatGPT. And that's because it can 
now understand the context of your questions and provide more comprehensive answers than ChatGPT, which often provides some not relevant questions and it has a lot of hallucinations. These are just a few of the new features that have been added to BARD and obviously it's constantly being updated with new features. It's still in experimental mode. I encourage you to check it out. And finally, BARD is now available in more countries. So now it's available in 180 countries and territories, which is awesome. And it means that almost anyone in the world can use it. And if you're using VPN, then anyone in the world can use it because it's not available in Croatia in my country right now. I'm using VPN and I have access to it. So use VPN if you don't have access to it. I actually tweeted about it. Follow me on Twitter if you're not doing so already. And I had a few replies from people in Canada saying they can't use it, but my VPN is in, Can like I'm VPNing to Canada and I can use it. So that was a little bit weird. Try a bunch of locations on your VPN and you should be able to access it. And from what I remember from Google I.O., you can also use it directly in Japanese and Korean. It now supports more than just English. So there's a few languages where you can directly speak to it in Japanese. I know that for a fact. And I love the cat. They also, of course, made Bard more secure with a number of new security features to protect your privacy. And ChatGPT hasn't really done any of that. I really don't trust giving my work code to ChatGPT. Not that I trust Bard that much more, but still. Now, let's move on to Gmail. So I used to work on Gmail and it has a good place in my heart. And now it just became 10 times better. It's made some major updates with the biggest one, Help Me Write feature, which is a mode that helps you craft your email responses so it can suggest relevant phrases, complete sentences, and even generate entire emails for you, which is what I've been using ChatGPT for, but copying and pasting is annoying and this is a huge time saver if you wanna write more professional and polished email. It also has been updated with a number of other features, like you can now add polls and surveys to all of your emails, and you can even send money to your friends and family through Gmail directly, which is great because I'm not a huge fan of PayPal, to be honest. Overall, this new Gmail is pretty dang awesome, so I'm super, super excited about the Gmail updates. Now, we also have some major updates in Google Maps, and I know you're thinking, oh, Google Maps, how much better can that really get? Well, now they have immersive view, which is a mode that lets you see a 3D model of your surroundings. So for example, if you're planning a trip to Paris, you can use immersive view to get a virtual tour of the Eiffel Tower or of the Louvre. It's really cool and it's a great way to get a feel for a place before you actually go there. So as a digital nomad, I'll be using that a lot. Also, Google Maps has been updated with a bunch of new features like live traffic conditions, which is super useful for getting detailed information about businesses and attractions. Huge improvements for Google Maps as well, but not quite as exciting as Bard or Gmail in my opinion. Now let's talk about Google Photos. I used to be a Google Photos user and then I moved to Apple Photos just because it's easier to select things for different apps when you're an iPhone girl, but I'm definitely going to switch back to Google Photos because they have the magic editor which uses AI to remove unwanted objects, enhance colors, and even add creative effects to all of your photos with just one click. So it's really easy to use and you can make all of your photos look amazing. So as a creator, I definitely love that. We also have other new features like creating collages and animations, and you can now share your photos with others in a more private way. I hope you found this video useful. Make sure you don't miss the next one by subscribing, turning on bell notifications, and I would highly appreciate a like for the YouTube algorithm. Let me know what you thought down in the comments and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.